Hey guys, today I'm going to give you an honest opinion on how Magic community has changed. And I was reading a post about Magic being the most toxic community. There's definitely more toxic communities than Magic. Also, I'll show you a slideshow of we took the interns and the entry level employees to a day out in spring, spring Texas, and we found we were going shopping for vintage stuff for the store. So I wanted to make this video because I have a unique perspective on it. Uh, a lot of people on YouTube, I don't think they actually have played Magic in when they were younger. They use Magic as a media to get attention, it seems like. But I've been playing this game since beta. And that was my first pack. Now the community was mostly male. It's always been mostly male. Uh, if I didn't read the statistic telling me that 40% of Magic players were female and you would ask me to guess what percentage of Magic players are female, I would look at my YouTube and my YouTube would tell me 98% are male and 2% less than 2% are female. And the 2% that are female who watch my channel are not likely to watch magic videos. They're likely to watch the Fire Emblem videos. So, uh, out of all the stores I've gone to, I've gone to a lot of stores in my elementary school. I did not know a single female magic player in middle school, high school, same, same. And I had a Wizard of the Coast store in middle school and part of high school. I think it went belly up after high school or during high school. And we had Radio Shacks and, you know, just uh, sports cards places would hold pizza parties. I remember those. I have, I did not see a single female Magic player until I went to law school. I did not see one in college either. And we went to multiple pre-releases, very large. We didn't go to GP level events, but we did go to pre-release level events. And it's just not, not, uh. If you had to, if I had to guess without knowing the statistics, I would say, I would say maybe 2% or less uh, Magic players are female. But on social media and the community, it seems like it's the reverse, right? <laughs> if you look at uh, the advertisements, it's always at least 50% female. If you look at who they're promoting, it's at least 50% female. And that's fine. You want to get into that demographic. But it does create kind of this um, question mark. Um, also, when I grew up playing Magic, it was always with people my age. And I don't... So when I look at like the community in general, my biggest critique... And yes, I will be making some critiques. So if you lasted here, I guess this is the good stuff. Is I don't think any of these people play Magic. <laughs> like It just seems... A, uh, that they don't they don't have the collection and i'm not saying oh you need to have a collection like mine to prove that you play magic i'm not saying that in any sense but i'm saying like they are pretending like they have this collection and i've never seen it like it's the it's what drives me crazy mtg finance show it you have it show it i mean if you're gonna yap your mouth and say that you're such a great speculator and you have all these power show it like Rudy shows it like I show it and like other people on YouTube show it because I don't know like this it, it makes no sense if a personality if someone's personality is to brag and show off why would they do everything they can not to show off their collection or not to take a picture or a video of their collection it's because they don't have it they can talk a big game but then don't walk it's what drives me crazy about MTG finance now the community has uh like I, I don't know how I, i'm going to put it in very very black and white wizard of the coast is trying to sell their company they no longer want to be involved in magic the gathering and everything they've done has indicated a sale how would i know about selling and buying companies i don't know because i guess i did it twice so the first time i was part of a startup and we sold a company at a large convention, which I also spoke at, by the way. 
and legality, dilution, all this fun stuff that I had to learn the first time. And it was very, very difficult. Dilution is just terrible um, of your stocks. You never get what you think you're going to get. So back to selling it. You need to pretty it up. You need the numbers to look good. I, I have seen fake numbers recently where the C CEO has stated to investors that they're doing three times as good, but GP attendance is down by half. Uh, there's not FNM. My local game store, when I first moved to Houston, it was called DNA Comics. I'm going to drop names now because who cares, right? It was DNA Comics, and I play there for RTR, Gatecrash. I just love that store so much, and they don't do magic anymore. They don't have FNM. They don't have pre-release. They're healthier than ever. Their book balance, their balance book, uh, balance book is way better without magic than with, with magic. And many stores are copying suit. The other store that I really had a good connection with was owned by my friend Graham in uh, Williamsburg called Groovy Geckos Phoenix Games, Phoenix Games Reborn, and then I think it's called Groovy Geckos 2 or something out sometime. It is just a difficult, difficult uh, business model to have. And now you're having, you know, GameStop talks. So if I had to guess uh, who would be possibly interested in buying it, it might be GameStop. Um, GameStop owns another company called Think Geek. So a lot of you say that GameStop is, you know, very small space, yada, yada, yada. Well, Think Geek is a much bigger space. They carry anime merchandise like uh, Funko figures. Just imagine your average anime store with very low quality merchandise. That's Think Geek. And they're owned by GameStop. Many people don't know that because the branding doesn't allow you to know that, but just Google it. The future of the Magic community, I think, is going to be... I don't really engage with members because I don't I don't think there's much I can gain from it uh, in terms of like what I want. I don't want a super big channel. I don't want recognition. Uh, I... I don't want to be recognized for Magic the Gathering. I'll just say that. It's a very honest video. That's not something I would want to be recognized you know, or directly associated with. Um, and I think it's because of the current culture. I, I used to be a very geek proud culture where, hey, I play Magic, you play Magic. We're both um, similar types of people. You know, I talked about the story of when I grew up, and there's some people I didn't like. They were very, very arrogant. But since we're all Magic players, we were all friends, and that's how it was. You could not have a sleepover and not invite them. You could not have a uh, lunch table game, and you could not invite them. Even, even if I didn't like the person, and the person forgot their deck as, uh, for lunch, I w and I had the extra deck, I would give them the deck. I would lend them the deck, and we trusted each other not to steal cards, not to cheat. And that was very unique. Um, this community that we currently have is appalling. Um, it's appalling for many reasons, but you know, cheating is rampant in this community, especially at, if there's like a pre-release. You're not going to win pre-release. The dude with the seven on-color mythics is going to win. It happens every pre-release. Like DNA Comics, I'll tell you the store that I went to pre-release, and I'll tell you, hey, the people in the top eight I won one time, I think, and I would say I had above average luck. I play enough gotcha games that I know what above average luck looks like, and some of the decks I ran into in the top eight were just, they could not possibly be real decks, because time and time again, you know, the same most powerful deck in a room ends up in the same player's hands. I remember at the DNA Comics, again, name dropping, right? Uh, one dude, we were just Dragon Maze, and he put in multiple Spark Troopers. One problem. At most, you get one Spark Trooper in Dragon Maze. I forget what the structure was. I think it was four Dragon Maze, one Gate Crash, and Spark Trooper, I think it was in Gate Crash, and then one RTR, something like that. But he had multiple Spark Troopers. 
And he he won the tournament, and then I asked to see his deck, and then I was like, no, no, this, this can't be. But by that time, he just ran. You, you think this is, like, ridiculous, but, I mean, <laughs> wow, right? Like, they're not even good at cheating, and that's what's so, um, that's what's insane. That the people who are really, like, they're not even good at cheating, like, like I get it. If you're really good at cheating, no one caught catches you, and you win a ton, then maybe that makes more sense. But if you're like really bad at cheating, and you don't even know like what type of packs that pre-release you're going to receive, and that you cannot get like free Sparks Troopers, then yeah, I mean that's real bad. So his deck was my deck, which was red uh, Boros Aggro, except with, with multiple Spark Troopers. I was like, how am I going to beat it? Right, I can't beat this. So community is kind of what you make out of it. Uh, and when I get older, I realize that I want to have a very close knit group of friends uh, that I trust, just like in middle school and elementary school, that won't come to my home and rob me, that won't come to my home and steal my cards, that we can have really nice um, dinners and people, you know, people would be okay with that. And that's what I want um, in a play group. I want some uh, people who, that's not about, like when people talk about casual magic, I think that's a interesting way to look at it. I look at casual magic more like, okay, I don't care if I win or lose, I'm just here to have a good time, but you can still be competitive. So the notion of casual not being competitive is incorrect. Our EDH group is super competitive. Everyone has four figure decks uh, at least uh, some of them have uh, black bordered uh, dual lands we've been playing again i've been playing this game forever and unfortunately i sold my collection twice which was unfortunate but some of my friends did not and they have the before ed8s collecting foil legends was not something that people did my friend Brendan, he has at least one copy of every single foil legend in his binder. Sometimes multiple copies. I know he has 20 copies of Captain Sisse foil. He probably has another 20 copies of Hannah. Sh he was collecting the crew members. That's what he wanted more than all, anything, was all those foil crew members. And Captain Sisse foil was not worth anything for the longest time. And then suddenly, boom. We also have lots of foil reserve list cards like Grim Monolith because for whatever reason, the dude was just collecting foils before it became popular. There was a time where a foil was not viewed like it is viewed today. It was a time that, oh, I got this foil. This sucks. I need to get like three more or otherwise my opponent would accuse me of cheating. And this not even considering the curling that happens today. But anyway, I wanted to show you kind of a slice of uh, life, I guess, in, um, in Houston. I am from Houston. I do live here. And this is, um, we will be doing more fun events. I think the La Vertar community event is our next one. But we actually had an open event that you can meet us at the Historical Spring. And we were shopping for antiques. Uh, we did find some cool ones. Uh, they were... I mean, this type of mom and pop shop, I really support. I think that you should support too, because it's just like your local game store. If no one supports them, eventually there won't be any of them. I think that's a great loss to the community. Anyway, that is it. Uh, I think this is the ramble. Uh, this is my take on the magic community. Bye, guys.